Hey friends, it's me, Vanessa Fernandez from the Enneagram Workshop, and I'm here to do a little coaching session for you. So I had just posted a bunch of mantras, things that every type needs to hear. And as the different types have been interacting with me over these mantras, they have been, a theme has come up that these mantras are difficult to believe, of course, which is why we need to reinforce them to ourselves constantly. But sometimes they're difficult to believe, not only because internally we don't believe them. For example, a type one does not internally feel like it's okay to make mistakes. <laughs> this is something that they need to repeat to themselves and, and work to believe. So every type has that mantra that they're just not naturally going to believe. But sometimes it's doubly hard. Not only do you internally not want to believe it, but you may be in an environment that is confirming your worst fears. So a type eight was writing to me and saying that the mantra, it's okay to trust others, is not only intrinsically hard to believe, but this eight is in an environment where those closest to them are being dishonest. And it only confirms the deepest, darkest fears of that type eight when the people around them are behaving in the way that they expect them to behave. It's like, how can I trust in someone when they're not being trustworthy? And a type two is telling me that their internal fear is that they're not lovable. So they need to be needed. And they were in an environment where the people closest to them in their family were telling them, I don't want you, I don't need you, and I don't love you. So how, when you already feel that internally, and then it's confirmed externally because of a challenging environment, how do you believe those mantras? How do you believe that it's okay to trust others? How do you believe as a one that it's okay to make mistakes when not only do you have that inner critic, but you're also in a work environment where your boss is constantly telling you it's not good enough. And here is, here's where the shift needs to happen. We don't believe those mantras because of an external confirmation. We believe those mantras because we are gonna look internally and discover that we are stronger, wiser, more worthy, more loved, and more capable than we thought. The whole thing of the Enneagram is that when we get in trouble, it's when we're looking externally to get what we need from the world, instead of realizing we already have it and it's inside. So instead of the type eight needing everyone around them to be trustworthy in order for them to trust, we repeat that mantra because as a type eight, you know that even if you are betrayed, you are strong enough to endure. You will not be crushed by it and you can carry on and still trust because you're not dependent on others, but you have an internal strength. Same with the type one. Type one, when you rest in the fact that you are good enough and you know that, then there isn't a hustling to constantly be perfect for everyone. And when a boss or a work environment is putting more pressure on you to be good enough, internally you can pull a strength that says, I am good enough and I will work to excellence and I will always give my best, but I will not place my worth on someone else's opinion or even on my own must have it perfect. There is an internal settling, a security, a peace, for the type two, if you're not loved, needed, and always wanted by everyone around you, the strength that you're gonna pull from that mantra is that you have that internally. You rest in divine love. You know that you are lovable and wonderful and such a blessing to others. And that comes from deep in here instead of needing to be externally validated. So when you are in an, an atmosphere that triggers that one spot that you already struggle with. Don't see it as a curse. Don't see it as a reason of why you can't grow in your essence. See it as an actual blessing to more quickly reveal where you are externally placing your hope and be able to start pulling it in and saying, I am worthy just as I am. I am capable in and of myself. I do not need to fear. I have security. I rest in my own strength, my own wisdom, my own love, my own goodness. That external triggering can be a good thing. It can propel you into growth quicker, better, 
<laughs> and more, um, you know, pain is such a big communicator. So when you experience that pain, you are going to either crumble or rise. And I know if you're here on this page watching this video, you want to rise and you can.